This meeting is being recorded. All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for coming today to our wonderful presentation with the lovely Liz for building a sustainable customer experience and maximizing your sales acceleration. Just a little bit of housekeeping. We will be recording. So if you do not wish to be part of the recording, turn your camera off. Otherwise, if you would like to ask a question, you will have to use the Zoom function of raise hand, which you can find in the bottom bar under reactions. We will then uh, ask you to unmute so you can ask your question. If you do not feel comfortable doing so, feel free to put your question in the chat. But a little bit about Liz. So Liz is a proud graduate of McMaster University who has left a lasting impression in both education and business. As a former academic vice president of social sciences, Liz was instrumental in establishing the experiment. Nope. I can no longer read. Please provide more caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Yeah. Liz was instrumental in establishing the experimental education program at McMaster University through her collaborative efforts as a co-creator with a dedicated group of individuals. Liz showcased her commitment to education and leadership from a young age in her career. With two decades of experience in system integration and business automation, Liz has gained a deep understanding of the industry and has used this knowledge to establish her own company. Uh, I'm going to probably butcher this. I apologize, Liz. WACADS Group, Inc. This company specializes in improving the customer experience through the integration of cutting-edge technology, such as software development and AI. Beyond her business success, Liz is also dedicated to giving back to the community. She mentors female-run businesses through a nonprofit social enterprise and actively participates in community building efforts as the vice president of BNI All Stars. Liz is also known for her charitable initiatives, including organizing food and clothes drives to support those in need. Balancing her professional and personal life with ease, Liz is a wife and mother of three boys who can often be found cheering at the hockey rinks and her strong sense of community passion for making a positive impact drive to succeed and love for her family make her a well-rounded inspiring individual so thank you so much again for being here today liz i'm going to hand it over to you and take it away well thank you so much for that wonderful introduction i hear that i'm like wow well, who is that let's go well thank you so much again it's always lovely to come and work with Paro. Um, to mentor and inspire uh, fellow female business owners. Um, of course, always wanting to inspire all individuals, be they male, female, um, or otherwise, including everyone in our celebration of business continuity and development. Today, we are gonna be looking at uh, building a sustainable customer experience and maximizing your sales acceleration. So definitely, that is a lot of words. <laughs> There are a lot, you know, it's like you're trying to condense it all on one page. And I thought this could be a novel unto itself. But we do have about uh, 45 to 50 minutes today to explore this content. Um, and really, the idea is to walk away with a tangible outcome. OK, so um, insofar as our agenda this morning. What we're going to do are some uh, introductions. You heard an introduction about myself. I'm going to talk about why we are transforming. Why are we even doing this? Why is Pero even hosting any of the workshops that it does? You know, um, and why are these important? What is sustainability? Um, what is sales acceleration? What is client retention? We're going to do a bit of a show and tell and then a thank you at the end. I did want to tell you that this is an interactive workshop. So um, there will be elements of pause. Uh, during it so that you will have a chance to write things down. Whenever I do a workshop, one of the things that I love is actually having people take things away. So for me to talk the whole time and not fun, but for you to get a moment to um, review the information and ensure that it is um, that you're capturing the concepts. If you have any questions, please remember to raise your hand or put them in the chat and we can unmute you and you may be asked to answer a question or two as we go through. So in terms of my company, um, my company is called WAC Ads Group. That stands for We Automate Companies and Develop Strategies. And basically, in a nutshell, that's what we do. So I have a team of developers and admin, and basically, we work to understand your organization to build highly personalized customer experiences. So not sort of the 
chat bots like, hi, how are you? Like not that type of stuff, not the form letter kind of stuff, but really getting to understand your organization, the value um, that you are providing to your client base and future clients and designing an experience that really demonstrates that. So for example, if you're a mortgage broker, maybe we would design like a mortgage calculator for you. And then that calculator would feed into an automation that would then follow up with people that used it. Um, if you were a gym, maybe you had a landing page and you wanted to integrate that with getting people to an open house. So there are a lot of very fun and exciting things that you can do within the automation space in order to um, scale and grow, and more importantly, demonstrate to your client base what you want, your client base, what you'd like to do. We're addicted to Scrum, so we work on short implementation cycles, and we focus on a high degree of prioritization, which means that we are trying not to do everything all at once, but we help you break things into smaller chunks so you can get that done. So that's a bit about our organization. Um, we also work um, with a variety of different platforms in addition to the one that um, we've curated. Um, so that would include, you know, HubSpot, Sage, automated based products that can uh, plug into automation. So you may be using some of these, you may be thinking of using some of these, and then you're like, okay, well, how is this going to work with my website? How is this going to work for my staff in terms of um, operations? That's where our team comes in and kind of puts all of the pieces together so you have a more fulsome customer experience. So why transform, right? Like, why are we even doing this? Why transform? And I, I put an asterisk there because, or an exclamation point, because it is really more of a statement than it is a question. Do we have a choice is the underbelly of what we're talking about here. You know, um, every day there are new companies that are formed every day. I'm sure all of us can think about one or two competitors and we see, you know, on socials. Oh, I got a new client here. Oh, I met with this person here. I met that person there. And you're thinking, wow, I want to be able to do that. I want to connect with those type of people. I want to manifest that type of success. Why transform? Why not? Really? Why not change what we were doing before because we weren't getting the results that we wanted? Why not adjust to what's kind of happening in the market today? Why not take a peek at how people are being successful, looking at the competition, seeing what they're doing, and then maybe learning that and then blowing past them, maybe adding something to that. Are these businesses sustainable? Are they scalable? So these are the types of things that we're going to talk about this morning. Really, you know, it's kind of an introspective look at what we are doing within our own organizations um, to surpass the competition, to accelerate our sales and to retain our clients. So like I said, this is interactive. There are going to be elements for you to uh, write things down and really reflect. I want you to take this as an opportunity to just Think about your business. Think about what you're doing right now um, in a very holistic way. So, I mean, why not transform? 2026, there's a new hybrid human digital workforce. That will be the new normal. And so people say that's fear mongering. I actually want to update this slide. I want to say that it is a lot sooner because those of you that have been following ChatGPT and ChatGPT4 and Lambada and BARD and all of the A know that artificial intelligence is here now and the tools are available to us now. So I think the next time I put this up, I'm going to put a big red X in front of 2026 and say, with every day, things are growing and transforming every day the competition, our own businesses, those around us in all industries are looking at way to do things faster and smarter. So the whole concept of work hard, play hard is kind of work smart, play hard, right? Or work smart, play smart, depending on how you look at it. So there's a lot to, um, to take into account when we think about automation and what it's bringing in artificial intelligence and the contribution 
that artificial intelligence is making to what we do every day. So to kick things off, what I would love you to do, and I have mine here, grab a blank sheet of paper, grab a blank sheet, and we are going to divide this paper into four quadrants, exactly as it is shown right now. So at the top of your page is where we're gonna do the first exercise. And that's where it's going to go. And I'm gonna throw my paper up there so you can kind of see how it would look if you were going to, um, if you were going to write it down. So first exercise there, oh, can't see, this is, this is two and then three and four. So in your first box is where you're gonna to start to put your first, um, your first set of answers. And really what this is gonna uh, develop into is really a matrix on um, building a sustainable customer experience and accelerating your sales and client retention. Okay, so keep that paper there. Is everybody good to go? You've got your paper? Okay, oh, wonderful. So what is sustainability? That is the first term that we use in our, um, in our review today. What is that? You know, like people are like, oh my God, Liz, like why are we even using this word? It sounds so big. And really what we're talking about are how are we going to thrive and live and grow as individuals, right? What are we doing? There are what are called the four pillars of sustainability. And this is really important because now as, um, as global citizens, we are all contributing to the world in many, many ways. Some of us are mindful of how we're contributing. Others um, are doing things and they're not knowing exactly what they're doing. But it is important in business to be aware of the four pillars of sustainability. The first is human sustainability. So this has to do with contributing to the health and well-being of others, skill development. How are we as humans contributing to our overall uh, personal well, well-being and growth? How are we promoting that? What are we doing? So bringing it down would be, are you nurturing your body? Are you eating three square meals? Are you just working all day? Are you not taking a break? Are you in a non-ergonomic setting? Are you not taking time out for family? You, the human, is what you're doing and how you're going about your every day. Are you, the human, as a being, sustainable? Are you able to continue at the pace you're at, treating your body and yourself the way that you do? So that's a mental note, something that um, you want to be mindful of and you want to think of. Social sustainability looks at the overall community. So yes, you as an individual in and of yourself, what are you doing for yourself? But socially, how are you contributing to your community? Some people might say, well, I offer a product or service and it's really good, so that's why I'm helping. Let's go one layer deeper. Let's go into how are we making our businesses more inclusive? How are we creating societies where people feel that they are welcome to participate? And moreover, what about our particular product creates an opportunity for the society as a large to um, interact with it? So, for example, if you own a cleaning company, you might say, Liz, what are you talking about? I go out there, I clean homes um, and it makes people feel better. What products are you using? How are you treating your workers? And in turn, then, what attitude does your workers have to the homes that they're cleaning and those that they're interacting with? It's like a trickle down effect, right? If we don't treat one another with respect, then others will not treat us with respect. So if we don't treat our workers or our clients with respect, they're going to have a negative outlook on life that day. They're going to then treat others not as well as they could. And then in terms of the social sustainability, things start to feel very fragmented, right? Because people are not interacting. Another way of looking at social sustainability has to do with, am I offering my product and service in a way that everyone can feel welcome to participate? Even if 
you're an example of the cleaning company, you're priced at a certain tier and you're for a specific uh, type of household, are you representing yourself in a way that all the people in your catchment area um, feel, your target area, feel like they can use your product or service, right? So it's just a different way of thinking about how we contribute socially. Economic sustainability is really what we're all after. So it's not just, um, you know, I check my QB, which is my QuickBooks, and wow, I made $5,000 this month. I feel really great about making that money. But then I check my QB next month and I made $2,000. Hmm, am I economically sustainable or am I flying at the seat of my pants? How are we using the assets, meaning the money that comes into our business? How are we building a foundation? Do we have a foundation? Do we have profitability over time? How are we managing our costs? Do we know what our costs are? One in five businesses go out of business within the first year, like almost immediately. Like people start, they got this great idea. They might put a whack load of money into marketing and then be like, whoa, <laughs> I spent all the money I got on that grant or that loan very quickly. And now I'm out of business. What am I going to do? So it starts to become something that is very, very, very real. Economic stability in the business is the business. The idea of a business is solely to create money and social wealth. If you weren't in a for-profit business, then you would be in a not-for-profit business. And even in a not-for-profit business, the net proceeds or your contribution to the community. So what are your key performance metrics? What are your indicators? What is telling you that your business is growing? And if you're looking at it um, from an economic perspective and you're saying, okay, Liz, well, I made 5,000, I made 2,000, that's $7,000 over two months. That's fantastic. Well, yeah, that's an average of $3,500. And each month, if you put the two sums together and divide it by two, but imagine if, you knew what your bottom line was. Imagine if you understood your profitability. You could maybe make 2,000 every month or you could maybe make 5,000 every month, give or take more or less. The idea being that you have to understand financially in order to actually be in business, we have to do the business work. And environmental sustainability, which if you've been following the news, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about financial sustainability right now. There's just, there's so much, um, not financial, sorry, environmental sustainability and the vitality of our, of our planet and the fact that we're on a planet. I mean, we talk about it, but it's kind of like we don't always recognize it in the practices that we do. Um, a lot of folks say, you know, Liz, it's very expensive. Some of the products that you, the, the, you know, environmentally safe products will make me bankrupt. Just like some people will say the organic food makes me bankrupt. Is it the idea that we can all do everything? No, because we're in the middle of a recession. And even if we weren't, some of this stuff is like crazy, crazy expensive, but we can all do our part. And when we pick one or two things, whatever they are, even if it means uh, my business for inter-office communication is going to go paperless, even if that's your contribution. That's a tick in the box for environmental sustainability. Even if it's, you know what, 100% um, of my marketing is all paper products. I'm deciding that I am going to only do paper for trade shows. Everything else is going to be some sort of a digital mechanism. That's a step in the road for environmental sustainability. Maybe I drive to every single meeting. I go the full distance all the way to, you know, let's say Oakville. Um, what I'm going to do is maybe have my first meeting on Zoom so that I'm not emitting so much carbon gases or I'm going to meet the client halfway or I'm going to do different things. That's all about environmental sustainability. So these four pillars, believe it or not, are actually how our businesses are evaluated when someone comes to interact with us. These are the four types of pillars that are kind of in the back of the mind that we have to think about um, 
when we are developing our organizations. So again, you know, how is sustainability important to your business? It has to do with attracting and retaining the right employees. You want to have people that have the same mindset as you, right? Because how are they going to, if they don't agree with you, how are you going to work with them? Like, it's not going to work. You want to have some type of a, a increased loyal customer base, people that are coming back to you. Even if you have a prospect that never actually buys anything from you, but that individual is, um, that individual is, working with you and, you know, wanting to know about your products, trying to figure out which one makes the most amount of sense for them. That's a good prospect. And if you're going about it in the right way, they will eventually become a customer and they might become one of your biggest customers because they're so bought into your value proposition and what you're doing. Um, And then insofar as the resilient supply chain is the, the resources that you're using, the tools and systems that you were using in order to action your business. So let's take a minute and write in the first quadrant at the top of the page, which of these sustainable elements are incorporated into your business? So I will go back to them. Human sustainability, right? Are you in your business investing in skill development? Are you investing in your own well-being? If you are a solopreneur right now and you are the only individual within your organization right now, are you taking care of yourself because you are the business? Are you getting adequate sleep? Are you getting adequate rest? Are you able to communicate with individuals um, in a meaningful way? Or are you just so stressed out that you're kind of choking the words out to people. You're rushing the contracts out the door. How well are you taking care of yourself? Is human sustainability, is your own sustainability something that you're looking at? How are you communicating socially? How, what are you contributing socially? Other than your exact product, your product, for example, we have digital business cards. So we offer that as a service. We create digital business cards for Um, organizations. Is it a socially sustainable product? Yes, but more than that, what is that doing for the community? If you own a, if you own an HVAC company, how is that contributing to social sustainability, the wellness of everyone? Economic sustainability, this is a big one. They're all huge. Don't get me wrong, but in the context of the business sustainability and vitality and longevity, economic sustainability along with human sustainability are like a way off the charts. If you're burnt out and you're a solopreneur, the business is done, okay? If you have um, an organization and you don't know what your numbers are, the business hasn't even started yet. You're not in business. If you're still get, if the invoices come in, yeah, we all get excited. The invoices come in and they're like, yay, I got this one for 200, 300, 450, 250, 165, 185. That's a lot of variability. How is that sustainable? Why are all the prices so different if you only offer like four or five products? Economic stability is absolutely huge. And then of course, we all know environmental sustainability is something that we wanna be talking about. So please take a moment. I'll give another 30 seconds for you to write in that top quadrant. The reason it's at the top is because this is the foundation. This is what is structuring your corporate culture. When someone interacts with you, they kind of come like, boop, they're going to hit this on the head. And it might not be the reason why they sign with you right away. But over time, the way you interact with them is going to communicate what your beliefs are from a sustainability perspective. So if you're good to go, if you wanna raise your thumb up, that would be great and then we can move on. Otherwise I will give some more time. Okay. Uh, You should see there Charlotte, the option to unmute now. Do you want me to talk? (laughs) 
Well, did you ask a question, Liz? No, I had okay. it. I had it. No, no. But it's lovely to hear your voice, Charlotte. Thank you. Okay. So now that we filled out the first quadrant, right, which is everything to do with sustainability. Sustainability being at the top. Now you're going to go over to the second quadrant. But before we dig into it, let's talk for a second. A sustainable customer experience. What is she talking about? They're like, I don't know. How what do you mean sustainable? It means that people are going to come to you and they will keep coming to you. That's basically it. How much time do we have for people to come to us? Um, new announcement this week from Instagram. Instagram says that they are now prioritizing images. They want people, they want to go back to the core. This is a big announcement. Everyone's excited. Imagine that. A platform for images now prioritizing images. Wow. Right? Two months ago, it was reels. Everybody was like, you got to get your reel done. Now it's images and carousels. Pictures, pictures, pictures. Well, we know that we have about six seconds to grab somebody's attention. I mean, and that is when they're like engaged. If I'm looking at my IG feed and I don't see the picture kind of doesn't grab me, I'm like, mm, not interested. Like you just go so fast. You don't like, you don't even know. And the people are like, did you see that? I'm like, oh my gosh, no, let me go back to it. Right. Cause it's like, it's like inundating with information. But what does that do? Social proof. Social proof, I'm going to tell you right now, is one of the ways to accelerate your sales. Highlight social proof. Not just saying, um, not just a picture of like two people giving a handshake. Yay, we're doing business, you know, and it's like a stock photography, you know. I'm saying testimonials are huge. How can you dress up a testimonial and put it on your IG or your Facebook? How can you, even if you decide to go with a video or an audio, how can you use the tools that are available to us to provide social proof? Social proof is credibility, 100%. We don't give one another as humans enough time to prove that we can do what we say we can do. We're so busy wanting it done that we overlook the process of getting the service. And we overlook sometimes the effort it takes for the service provider to deliver that service. So in the example of the cleaning company, okay, I booked a cleaner, I'm so excited. You know, I'm a mom, you know, three boys. So I wanna one day be able to book a cleaner consistently. <laughs> and they come in, I'm so happy. Have I thought about all the logistics that it takes for that person to get the chemicals, pay the markup, hire the staff, train the staff, have the schedule down pat, make sure someone's coming to myself, you know, giving the person the pitfalls. If there's an animal, if there's not an animal, uh, what to touch, what not to touch, how to leave the message, how to for the toilet paper, like everything. There are so many elements. But as the consumer, we're not thinking about that. Right. And some people would say, well, I don't have to. But you know what? As the business owner. I maybe want to sprinkle some of that out. I maybe want to take a picture of my staff showing up on site with a big smile or looking professional or making the bed or et cetera, et cetera. I want to have that social proof. But more than that is someone saying, yes, her team came or his team came or their team came and they provided that service and it was wonderful. So that is the number one in terms of sales acceleration uh, social proof is absolutely huge. Qualifying leads. What prompts you to send the contract? What prompts you? Make a note. Someone calls you up. They say, hey, you know, I would love to. Hey, Margaret, I would love to do business with you. Can you slide that contract over? Is that what prompts you to send the contract? How do you even know if you want to do business with the person? How do you even know if you service that industry? Or are you in a position right now where you're saying, 
I am just going to do whoever comes to me because I want to make money and we're in the session and I have to make money. I have to feed my family. I have to pay my bills. Where are you? And what percentage of your business does that make up? If we're just taking everybody and we're not qualifying everyone or anyone, how do we know what we really want? Do we have an opportunity in our business to look at saying, okay, I, for hundred percent of the leads I get, I'm going to try to qualify to start 25% or 50%. So I can hone in a specialty because we know that a specialty just basically means I love working with these types of people. I love working with these types of businesses. And when we do what we love, we provide the best results. And when we provide the best results, guess where that takes us? Back up to number one with highlighting social proof. Those are the people that are going to come back and say, you know what? Liz is absolutely fantastic, right? That's what we want. Nurturing. What does that mean? They're like, oh, I, I sent my client a DM on Messenger. I nurtured the client. Really? Is really is that what you were doing? Or were you DMing your client on Instagram? There is a huge difference, okay? Or I have a Facebook group and I post messages all the time. Really? I didn't realize that a picture of my kids or my cat or my dog or my family in front of the tree for Christmas was nurturing my client base. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry, I missed the memo. I was still talking before we relied on social media to do everything. How about nurturing, meaning uh, that I'm actually having some type of a meaningful conversation with my target audience or putting out something that might be for free that can help them in their daily business? How is so much as important as why? Why are you communicating? Is it because it's motivation Monday? And that means I'm going to slap the post out and let everybody know, okay, I scheduled this one on, you know, Planable or wherever else. And now I want you to know that I care about, um, I care about motivating people on Mondays, every Monday. That's when I care about motivation. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, not so much because I only do it on Monday. We have to think about what we do and we have to think about what the intent of it is. So when we talk about nurturing, it is how are you staying in contact? Why are you staying in contact? And what value is whoever receives that message going to receive? What is the value? It's got to be more than got another one from Liz. Love that gal. It's not good enough. That is not going to accelerate your sales at all. All it's going to do is fill up your social media calendar with things with very little return on investment. Pricing, transparent pricing. This goes right back to economic sustainability. How much does it cost? How was the price determined? And are you making a profit? You might say, Liz, why does this have to do with sales acceleration? Because if I keep putting products out there where I'm not making a product and I'm not making a profit, it doesn't matter how much I accelerate my sales. I'm still broke. It doesn't matter how much I accelerate my sales. I'm looking for loans. I'm looking for grants. I'm trying to dig myself out, but I'm so busy. I don't understand what's happening. I'm so busy. I have all these clients, but at the end of the day, I'm not making any money. So while the pricing might be transparent, I put on my website, $49.95, you can get this. $100, you can get a digital business card. It might, you might say that's transparent pricing, the customer knows. No, no, but what made up the $100? Do you know what your profits are? So transparent pricing is transparent to you and your client so that you can, again, happily do the work. So it's not enough to say digital cards, $100. I have to understand the metrics behind that because when I understand the metrics, I will then be able to have a, a conversation around qualifying the opportunity and I will get more of what? Social proof because the product I'm putting out there meets not only my client's needs, but my personal needs. So take a minute and give yourself 
some transparent pricing um, that has some buffer in there has, you know, there are all these things you can Google to find out about how to put pricing together um, and then also make it make sense. The other part of this is if you say, if you're not sure and you say starts from, that's fine. Um, people kind of want to know often, you know, what's this price going to look like? You know, how much is this going to cost me? Uh, you don't want to have a thousand products and like no price because then people don't understand unless you work in a conceptual framework. Um, there has to be, however, at some point, some tangible pricing that's shared. And number five, um, which has everything to do with quality of life. You know, I talked about the economic human sustainability component. This is human sustainability component, delegate and or automate. If you are a solopreneur and you are the only one running the shop, maybe your family chimes in, you can get your kids to help you out or your husband or your spouse or your partner, or somebody's helping you, a friend, your mother. At the end of the day, when all of those free resources are gone, okay, who's doing the work? How many people are behind you? Or how many robots are behind you? What systems or tools do you have in place, artificial or human, that can help you drive your business. If you're a solopreneur right now, and if you don't have anything or anyone helping you, and you're doing everything in Excel or some other sheet program or Word, all very good programs in their own right. However, you're probably killing yourself to get it done. And it's kind of two sides of the coin. One side is, no, I'm managing. That just means you don't have a lot of business. <laughs> it means that you need to get more clients because when you get more clients, you'll quickly be in the bucket of, yeah, so this isn't going to work. I'm going to need something that is a lot more sustainable and fruitful. Our human existence, our bodies, our physiology, our brains um, are not wired to be on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is not how we were designed. So if you are having to run your business and you cannot be separated from your phone, you can't. You're in this meeting, you're trying to text someone. I'm going over here. You can't do that. You need to look at delegating and or automating the functions that are causing you the most amount. So take... Um, Take a minute and think about how are sales flowing into your business, right? How are they doing? Go over to square number two and start writing in things like, what social proof do you have? Do you have any? Do you have socials? Do you have testimonials? Are you qualifying? We know that emails are 42% effective. People say they're annoying. 40 2% effective emails. And you want to know what's even worse than that? I'm going to give you a worse stat. Long form content emails. You know, the ones where you get, and it's like, someone's like, Hey, Katie, you know, I had a rough day today. And I was sitting back and thinking about my life and saying, how can I improve my business? And I thought, wow, as a bird came flying by my window, you know, and it's this whole big long winded thing. And you're you scroll through at first and you're like, I have no time to read this. But then there's that moment where you're like, let me just see this one. People read long form emails. They read it. We want to read. Emails are 42 percent effective. What are you doing if you're not emailing or even if you are emailing? What else are you, are you calling people? It can't just be, it just can't be social media. It just can't be a Facebook page. It, can't, it just it just blows my mind. It just can't be, right? You've got to have something else going on. Are you calling people? Are you making appointments? Are you visiting them? Are you having group? Are you part of a, some type of an association or a group? Are you going to drop in events? What else are you doing to uh, nurture your clients? So make sure and write that down. Are you making money? We talked about delegating. Take a couple more minutes and just write down some of the systems that you're using. Systems are there to help. 
write that list down. I would love to meet with each and every one of you and talk about your system and see, do you have overlapping systems? Do you think you're automating or delegating and it's not working? What's not working? If you're paying for tools and you're like, no, I'm just as crazy as I was before, chances are there's something wrong with the setup. And we got to take a look at that and figure out how to make it work. So I'll give you another 30 seconds or so if you'd like to just fill in two number two box, which has to do with sales acceleration. I don't know, I have to show this and I think I have such great penmanship and then I look at it in the camera and I'm like, mm, not so much. <laughs> Okay, if you're good, give me a thumb. Or not, because they might take you off mute. Okay, I'll take that as a sign of yes. <laughs> Thank you. Client retention. Okay, um, retention. We call it um, in our organization, um, and many organization has everything to do with operational resilience. You hear me talk about that if you've been to any of the events where I've been a guest speaker, I'm talking about operational resilience. Operational resilience um, includes current retention, but it also includes your staff if you have tangible staff. So it's how you're retaining your clients and how you're retaining your staff. That is your operational resilience. Today, we're gonna to focus on the client retention portion of that. Retention is the rate at which customers stay in your business, which means we're going to go back to cleaning company. I did one clean for a house. They never called me back or I sold one package of cleaning to a property. There was a no follow up business. What went south? Someone had a burning need. Think about this, especially in the context of a recession. People are broke, okay? Not all. Some are broke. Some are wincing by. Some are cutting corners. Truth is, it doesn't matter how rich you are right now. There are things that people are taking off the table in order to make sure that they can put things on the table a month or two months from now. That's the God-given truth. That's really what's happening out there in the marketplace. You sell a package, they never call you back. What went south? Ask that question. We don't make purchasing decisions in a recession so we can decide to not do it or to be proven wrong, right? We need to ask the question. So what I want you to do is you'll see in the corner here, there's a number three and it's broken in half. You're gonna take that three, you're gonna put a line on it on one side, you're going to have A's, so line up and down. I hope that you can see that. One side's going to be A. I'm going to grab my highlighter. The other side is going to be B. On the A side, this is good. Better, yay. On the A side, you are going to write the names of your favorite clients. You're going to write, how did you meet them? Even pick one. How did you meet that client, right? How long have they been with you and what service are you doing for them? Write that along the A side. Take a moment to do just that. I have a client that I absolutely adore. I have a lot of clients that I, I absolutely adore. One thing about me is I love interacting with people. I love working with people. And um, the people that I work with love working with me. So it's just a great, wonderful relationship where everyone's needs are met. And I know it can't always be like that, but I do a lot of qualification in my business to make sure that I am aligning. When we're in business, we're giving away of our life. This is the time, right? You're dedicating of your life to this business. So make sure that the piece of yourself that you're given is appreciated. Okay. So if you've written everything on the A side, write the names of your two favorite clients, one or two, and how long you've been with them. 
On the B side, I want you to write the name of the client that you're no longer working with. These, you're not working with them anymore. I want you to write, where did you meet them? How did you meet? Was it a referral? Was it a family friend? And, and actually, let's just address the idea of family as clients and say that they are wonderful, lovely people and they care about you and they are fantastic starter clients. But we are talking about building a sustainable business and our family may not always be the ones to tell you the truth. So if all of your clients are your bestest friends, right, look beyond that. And if your bestest friend didn't renew with you and that individual is your only client, ask them why. Find out why. There are learnings there 150% because we all spend money when we have money to spend it. So the question becomes, why did they choose to no longer spend money on you? And that's it. Okay, so take a minute to write that down on your paper. Churn rate has everything to do with how people cycle through you want low churn, which means they're there for a while. That's how you grow. They're there. They're there for the long haul. So think about that as you're writing this information down. So now that we've looked at three components, I mean, these are three very key components to building a sustainable customer experience, to building a sustainable business, sales acceleration, sustainability and client retention. Sustainability, again, is at the top of our paper. The very top, sustainability. I guess this would be my right, your left, sales acceleration. Okay. And then on the left side, it is the whole piece of client retention. And we broke client retention into an A and a B. A being the clients that stayed with us, B being the clients that left. They fleed the coop. We want to know why. Do you see how the matrix is starting to unfold when I hold it in the middle of the screen? <laughs> Do you see how it starts to shape a diamond in our business? Every person loves diamonds. They sparkle. Diamonds always sparkle. At the bottom now, you're going to take what you're doing well in sustainability. You're going to take the components you're doing well in sales acceleration or the areas that you want to improve. You want to take what you're doing with the good, but you want to take your learnings, whatever learnings you get from those that have left you. And then that's your model down the bottom. That's your model for how to improve and how to grow. It is so critical for all important for all of us to recognize that we grow not only when people pound us on the back, you know, puff our tires up. People do all these different things. It makes me laugh. But when people say all the things that we love to hear, when we really grow is the B, right? There's a term people will say, oh, I was rolling on doves. Everything came out. It was great, right? Oh, it's gravy. Business is gravy. And they're like, wow, looks like you have a lot of customers. You know, I talked to you in the last six months. You know, you had six, seven, eight people coming in the door. Then you're like, well, no, I still have six or seven. Oh, how? You had a couple people come in last month. Yeah, was, you know, they came, they got the service, they left. Oh, what happened? Did you not have another product that you could put in front of them? I mean, if you were so in love. And everything was so perfect, right? So again, take sustainability at the top. What are you doing? If you're a solopreneur, how are you feeding yourself so that you can contribute to others? The old adage that says, you can't save someone else if you can't save yourself. 
It's only a matter of time till you hit burnout. Same adage applies to people that run um, organizations with employees. You can't inspire and help your employees if you cannot inspire and help yourself, right? Leadership comes from the top. The sales acceleration piece, what are you doing? Are you nurturing? Do you have social credit? What do you have? And then um, on the left side, the client retention. You gotta take the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what makes us human. Nobody is perfect. And people that profess to be perfect are typically the ones that are the least perfect and have some insecurities, just saying. But um, we need to be mindful for that. I would really love um, if Pero could send me some screenshots of this bottom quadrant. If any of you do this exercise, if you feel comfortable to share that with me, I would absolutely love that. And I would love to do, um, you know, a quick discussion with you, you know, to learn what you may have learned from this workshop and how uh, it helped to grow and develop your business. In short, I mean, automation is changing the way we do business. It is. AI is legit changing <laughs> the way we do. It. I mean, even, even for me, I'm in the tech space, but it's so, so huge that I, I can't, I mean, I can't do everything. I want to do everything, but I can't. <laughs> so I defer to colleagues that can sometimes do things better than I can. And that's what makes me a global citizen. That's what makes all of us global citizens and contributing to a sustainable environment. But traditional media needs a jetpack, right? To automate, we have to be standardized, repeatable, and scalable. That's all we ever want. That's all all of us want is to just run that system again and again so that we can get more clients. We know 85% of global organizations have accelerated their digital transformation. They're using some kind of tool. Some people are using way too many tools. They don't work together, but they're using something. So if you find that you're not using anything or what you're using isn't working, that's an opportunity for, with a, for a conversation with people that work in automation. That's an opportunity to examine and go back to this matrix and say, what's not working? And we often like to say that in automation, when you do that, you save a minimum of you know, two hours a week. That's saying, or two and a half hours, it's saying you're saving half an hour every day. So that would be 2.5 hours a week. And I don't know about you, but I stopped working five days a week three years ago. <laughs> So <laughs> it's a lot more when I do the math and I get to the end of the month. So build a repeatable, standardized customer experience and you are going to earn and retain more clients. That is the bare bones of it. Now our next um, meeting, we are gonna be focusing on fixing the leaky pipe. The leaky pipe has everything to do with how we lose people. How do we stop losing them? We are going to dedicate a whole session to how do we stop losing clients? In that piece, we are going to be talking about operational resilience. So I said operational and resilience has two components. One is client retention. The other is staff. We are going to talk about staff. However, we are going to talk about staff in the context of the human hybrid workforce. So Staffing being your systems. What humans or systems are you using to execute your business? And client retention. Why are people leaving? We're going to spend a whole hour talking about that. If anybody has any questions, please go ahead. You can scan my QR code um, and feel free to book a meeting with me. I would love, love, love to talk to you and hear about how your businesses are going. Feel free to raise your hand if there's anything you would like to ask. Um, if you can't think of that right now, you can always shoot me an email or reach out to Peril and they will connect you with me because I'm also a Peril mentor. Charlotte has a question. There you go, Charlotte. Should be able to unmute now. Thank you. <clears throat> I wanted to thank you uh, for your presentation. Um, I do Lean Six Sigma and some of my challenges are, yeah, I think we talk the same language is I am very strong in manufacturing. Like I don't even need to build that customer base, 
but it is like a once through, right? So I've been focused on, hey, get into uh, hospitals, uh, nonprofits need support. Um, those are some of the challenges that I've had is crossing these silos and saying measurable results. And they're like, we don't care. Like it's not, it doesn't fit into their vision statement. So I've often been challenged by the jargon of, of silos. And, and that's probably one of my biggest challenges, I think. You know what, I'm so happy that you said that. I know, um, so I'm actually just wrapping up my black belt in Ooh. six Sigma. Yes, so yeah. we have to talk. Charlotte, yeah. make sure that you jot my phone number down. I would love to talk to you about the transferable skills. There's so much when we talk about KPIs. There's so much when we talk about predictability. Um, you have so much to offer. That's a tremendous skill base. It's yeah. just, you know, always educating people and looking at it sometimes from a different perspective. But please text me today and I'll send you my calendar and we can connect. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Pero. Thank you so much for coming today, Charlotte. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like a slow, solo person at these things sometimes. Yeah, it's we're at our busy month. But again, thank you so much, Liz, for the wonderful presentation today. Thank you for coming. Um, Liz, all of the information is on the screen there again. Um, as well, we can connect you at Pero. If you would like to watch uh, today's recording again, please send us an email at communications at pero.ca. And thank you again so much for coming today, Liz. My pleasure. Always great to see all my folks at Pero. You guys have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.